Welcome to Chatufa TV Productions. Chatufa TV Productions, connecting you to the world. It's a blessed day once again, family, as we meet on Chatufa Television Production, Chatufa Chete Chete. This is the gospel of the freedom of the Zimbabwean people. And we are very excited once again to meet on this platform as we continue to look into issues that are happening in our nation, around our nation and all over the world as we push towards the freedom of Zimbabwe. We know that we are in that time and in that season where we say God is is in it and god is definitely delivering zimbabwe into the hands of the zimbabwean people uh so we are looking at uh, uh what has just happened after the uh freedom of namatai and others namatai Kwekweza has sent a message to the zimbabwean people and uh very very important uh the young woman coming out after being given bail uh, she has sent a message to the Zimbabwean people, a message of hope, a message of strength. And this was a really powerful, powerful message that she has sent. And I said, when I read it, I said, this is a young fighter, uh, somebody who does not give up, who will fight throughout. And I decided that I need to read the message and help her to send the message to the Zimbabwean people all over the world. She says... With a, with a stubborn hope, a strengthened resolve, and clarity of purpose, I write to you with the deepest, utmost gratitude for the love, solidarity, and support that Robson Cherry Samuel Gwenzi and I received, which has warmed my heart. The love and solidarity have come from many Zimbabweans and people from around the world, and it deeply inspires me to have a sense of humility, hope, and courage to continue the struggle for a better Zimbabwe even after a horrific ordeal. The messages, the prayers, the legal support, the medical support, practical uh, assistance, and uh, keyboard warriors have all worked together to ensure our release. And it is this uh, the solidarity that kept my brothers in the struggle and me strong until day 35 when we were released on bail. I have also received a lot of love and solidarity from the 29 courageous women who were arrested on the 16th of June along with Jameson Timber. The world must know that they are still at Shkrubi maximum female prison and they have suffered a great deal from the brutal beatings they were subjected to on the 16th of June. They are the people who took care of me when I arrived at Chikurubi prison, traumatized and in pain, and the people who gave me the hope and resolve to remain strong until my release on bail. I'm aware that a few of them were released. However, we all are not free until all of them are free. We must take this moment uh, as a nation to continue demanding the un uh, unconditional release of all political prisoners is there are many whose stories might never reach the media, but they, uh, they still su suffer greatly and their stories deserve to be told and heard. On 31st July 2024, uh, we, Chere, Gwenzi and I boarded a domestic flight to Victoria Falls at 12.50 and uh, this was the start of our horrific ordeal. We were abducted, taken to the dom uh, to domestic terminal at the airport, which at the time was closed to the public due to renovations, tortured, held in communicando, intimidated, interrogated by unidentified persons, and finally handed over to the police after eight hours upon which the disorderly conduct charges were brought against us. The persons who interrogated us kept accusing us of planning demonstrations to humiliate the country and the president during the SADC summit, and they started uh, stated that they were on their way to Victoria Falls, uh, that we were on our way to Victoria Falls to meet more people to plan with. All of us were clueless about the stated accusations, and we were told uh, that when the static visitors came to Zimbabwe, we were to be well behaved and not humiliate the country. In hindsight, I think of how silly these people sounded, and yet for those reasons, we were abducted, tortured, and imprisoned. What is further concerning is the charge of disorderly conduct at an incident that occurred while I was outside Zimbabwe. Uh, Chere and Gwenzi also were also not present at the stated incident. The issue is not about the charge of disorderly conduct. It is about the abduction and torture that happened prior ahead of the SADC summit and 
our abductors need needing a justification for why we were held in communicando for eight hours before releasing us into police custody the conditions we were subjected to after our arrest uh, were uh, macabre uh, the issue was that my co-accused were moved from remand prison to the d section of chikurubi maximum prison for men and they were they would come to court with leg with the leg irons and handcuffs they were treated like dangerous criminals and it shocks me still that persons charged with disorderly conduct are treated like those charged with more serious crimes of concern was mr chere whose injuries were extremely severe and walking in leg irons uh, with his injuries is sometimes that took courage and resilience prison life is difficult and prison conditions painful not only for people uh, for political prisoners uh, but for prisoners in general i'm thankful to the many individuals and organizations who i saw coming to visit prisoners particularly the seventh day adventist church which uh, a lot of prisoners speak highly of so this is it uh this is the message that uh namatai has sent a gratitude message to the zimbabwean people for the support that uh, was given to her and the other colleagues after they were unlawfully arrested by emerson Mnangagwa and zanu pf and this uh, really is a very sad uh um, you know it's a historical moment in our pol politics in zimbabwe where we would have somebody who is supposed to be a black nationalist and liberator who behaves more more rogue than uh, uh, the white ian smith uh, government we have seen emerson mnangagwa becoming more of a bishop of violence and uh, uh, you know misappropriation of the law as well as uh, human rights abuses more than what Mugabe did. Mugabe is seen today as a saint because of what Mnangagwa has done after Mugabe. So this is the fight that the Zimbabwean people still have, have like Namata has been saying, that we continue to be strong and resolute to continue to fight to make sure that our country receives freedom, our country becomes democratic, and all prisoners that are political must be released and forthwith. And this is a call that we will continue to make that Zimbabwean people, they deserve freedom. Zimbabwean people deserve to have a free country, a country in which we can live peacefully and without fear of being victimized uh, for political uh, participation or for any other reason uh, like what we are seeing that uh, anyone can be arrested at any time in Zimbabwe, whether you have committed crime or not. And that really is a very sad uh, development. So for Mnangagwa and ZANPF, they may continue to do what they think they are doing and successfully. But one thing that is certain is we have reached a time that the people of Zimbabwe continue to rise and fight against free, uh, the, the oppression and the time and the season for the Lord to bring liberty and freedom to his people. Zimbabwean people will never continue under this oppressive rule of Emerson Nangagwa and Sanu PF. There is a day and a day that is coming, a day that is not far from us today, where God is going to set our nation free. Zimbabwe shall be free and the pains of the past shall be uh, a thing of the past. And indeed, we shall forget all these pains because Zimbabwe will become a nation that will wipe the tears of the Zimbabwean people. We have suffered at the hands of ZANU PF for a very, very long time. And this is, remains our fight and our struggle to make sure that we free our nation, Zimbabwe becomes free, Zimbabwean people can begin again to work on their country, to develop their country, to uplift their country, and not to continue to be one of the countries that continue to be mocked. Countries of the world uh, mocking Zimbabwe and mocking Zimbabweans left, right, and center, all because of what is being done by very few individuals in our country who are selfish and who are greedy. And these people, they don't think about anyone else except themselves. And this is the reason. It's not that Zimbabwe fails because it is a failed, a failing country. It is because some people are causing the failure. Some people are manufacturing the poverty that we are seeing in Zimbabwe. And this remains our battle. So Zimbabwe, rise up and continue to fight. We will continue to speak. We will continue to talk. You have heard Namatai saying that uh, the keyboard warriors, uh, your effort and what you did, it never went to the drain. It really uh, made a great, great, uh, you know, move and a change. So never underestimate the noises that are made on social media as we talk on these platforms and as we continue to write, to tweet, and also to share on WhatsApps and whatever Facebook. 
we continue to make noise about the situation in the country and uh, at the end of the day contributing to some uh, shift that is happening uh, when pressure continues to mount on the regime so let's not underestimate our effort uh, in the, uh, our fight for change that we are putting against zanu pf day in and day out what we are fighting for is the freedom of zimbabwe and we know that zimbabwe will be free and zanu pf will never last forever there is nothing that lasts forever everything is a beginning and an ending and then the ending of zanu pf is not far from here and from now because we have reached a season of change so fight for change zimbabwe demand freedom zimbabwe rise up zimbabwe continue to speak out zimbabwe do not tire do not give up do not surrender don't throw in the towel this is the time that we are much closer to the freedom of zimbabwean people like ne never ever before so we will continue to push to fight to struggle and to continue to hold on until our country is free we definitely are fighters that are coming out victorious at the end of the day we are not alone in this struggle we have god in this struggle as the zimbabwean people we have our god standing with us we have our god in our corner and there is no way that any man any mortal man can change the plans of the almighty god over the nation of zimbabwe and we are saying today declaring the living word of god over the nation of zimbabwe we are saying god is in it and indeed freedom is our portion we want to continue to believe and to pray that those that are still imprisoned are going to be released very very soon and they shall be coming to join their families as god intervenes and our prayers being answered let's continue as intercessors to pray for zimbabwe let's pray for our nation let's not forget that god uh, is watching over zimbabwe he is not quiet he has not forgotten us he has not forsaken us he is working out a, a, some means and ways of freeing his people and definitely we are gonna be free so mnangagwa and zanu pf your days are numbered you may continue in the way you are doing things but know that your days to an end are very very close and zimbabwe will be free aluta continue until our country is free so family i really appreciate you thank you so much for joining me on the show thank you for supporting the freedom of the zimbabwean people thank you for supporting your platform and i really salute you for fighting hard to make sure that our country is freed and indeed zimbabwe will be free i thank you for joining me on this show let's meet in the upcoming shows remain blessed